The convergence of video and still images is really quite amazing. And you know, you'll be hard pressed to find a camera or a phone which doesn't shoot video and still images together. And so here we're going to take a look at how we can work with our video files from inside of Photoshop. We'll start off with a simple task. We'll take a look at how we can bring a clip into Photoshop, how we can change its color and tone, and also add perhaps some copy or some typography to the clip. We'll also look at how we can work with music and transitions. Well, this is the clip that I want to work with. It's a short clip of a very famous professional surfer. So let's go ahead and navigate over to Photoshop. And inside of Photoshop, let's select our file pull-down menu. Next, choose Open. Here we want to browse to this folder where we see this video file, Rob underscore Portrait. Next click, Open. This will open up this clip in a really fascinating way. You'll notice in your Layers panel you have what's called a video group. Then we have the video file inside of that group. Then we have a timeline. This timeline allows us to view the clip. We can grab the playhead needle and scrub back and forth in order to view the clip. Well, before we actually start scrubbing or editing or changing this, what I want to do is I want to mute the audio of this file so that it's not distracting. To do that, right-click or control-click right on the clip in the timeline. Next, click on this little music icon, and then at the bottom, you can click on this option, Mute Audio. The reason why I want to do this is I'm going to use a different audio track for this clip. Okay, well, now that that's done, the next step for me is going to be to edit this. I want to edit out the first little bit of this clip, so I can go ahead and click down in my timeline, perhaps, till I find an area that I know where I want to start, right about here. You can also just simply click and drag in order to scrub to find the area where you want to start. Once you find that point, there are a couple of different ways that you can cut out the previous part of the clip. One really easy way is to hover over the clip. When you get to the end, you notice the cursor changes. Well, here I can click and drag all the way to my playhead needle, let go, and it will then cut out that part of the clip. It's now gone. Well, now that I've made a few changes, what I want to do is save these out. As you work with video, you'll have really large files, so you want to make sure that you're saving your work. To do that, we'll go ahead and navigate to our file pull-down menu, and here we'll choose Save. This allows us to save this file, and we'll name it Rob Portrait, and save it in that same folder. Simply click Save in order to save that document. Well, now that we have this, let's go ahead and take a look at our clip. As we scrub through it, you can see that it's a handheld clip of this guy, Rob Machado, again, a really famous surfer. And let's say that I want to use this kind of as an intro slide in a surf movie, which will introduce this surfer, and then later it will show him surfing. Well, I like this clip. It's handheld. It's a little bit edgy. I like the feeling of it. But I don't really like the color or tone. Well, to make changes to the way that the video appears, it's really easy. All that you have to do is to use one of your different adjustments. Let's try curves. Here, I'll click on the curves icon. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag up to brighten up the video file. Then I'll go down to my various channels. I'll try the red channel. I'll add a little bit of cyan. Then I'll go down to the blue-yellow channel, and perhaps I'll add a little bit of yellow there. And then maybe perhaps the green channel, add a bit of magenta. Now, the point here isn't to follow along with these specific adjustments, but rather to highlight that you can use all of these different adjustment layers in order to change the way your video file appears. Take a look at it. Here's our before. Now here's our after. We can also zoom out a little bit. On a Mac, press Command minus. On Windows, press Control minus. This way, we can see this a little bit better here. And here again is our before and after. I kind of like this yellow cross-process type of aesthetic. All right, well, now that we've modified the clip, we've edited it, we've changed its color and tone using an adjustment layer, what I want to do next is I'm going to close my Properties panel, and I want to start to add some transitions. Transitions in Photoshop are extremely easy. You'll notice there's this little square icon. If you click on this, it allows you to determine or to choose some transitions. Let's say we want to fade from white. We'll just click, drag, and drop. And there you have it. This clip will now fade from white. And we can play this in order to see how this works. Now, if the clip happens or if the transition happens too quickly, you can hover over it and click and drag to extend it. You can make it longer or shorter by simply clicking and dragging. And you know, one of the beauties of working with video in Photoshop 
is that it's really quite simple, and you can take advantage of all that you already know. Okay, well, let's create a transition at the end of this. We'll go ahead and choose Fave to White, drag and drop, and then here it is at the end. If we grab the playhead needle, it now fades out to white. Okay, well, we're actually making some really good progress. We brought the clip in, modified its color and tone. We edited it a little bit, cut it down, and added some transitions. Well, let's continue to work with this clip and take a look at how we can finish this little project off in regards to adding some type and also adding an audio file as well. And let's take a look at how we can do that in the next movie. So go ahead and leave this document open as we'll be working with this one in the next movie. Here in this movie, we're going to continue to work with the same video clip, yet here we're going to focus in on how we could add some type and how we could fade that type in, and also how we could add an audio track. Well, in order to add type, what we want to do is create what's called a new video group. You can do that by clicking in your timeline on this little icon here. Go ahead and click on that, then choose New Video Group. You notice that you now have a new folder or video group. Next, select the Type tool. You can do that by clicking on it in the Tools panel. Then I'll go ahead and click on the image. I'm just going to type out this particular person's name, Robin Shotto. Next, press Command Return in order to apply that type. Here, I'll select the Move tool. I'm going to go ahead and reposition this. I want this to show up right about here. Well, now currently the type shows up at the beginning of this movie file. I don't want that. So just click and drag and move it over. Here, I want it to show up a little bit further down the line so that here he'll turn his head, then once he does, we'll have his name show up there. Okay, well I want to modify this typography a little bit. I can do so, say, by adding some layer style effects. To do that, simply double click the layer. Here we'll add a drop shadow, also a brush stroke around this. The brush stroke that I'm going to add is going to be a white brush stroke, so I'll choose that option here, and then click OK. After you've dialed in the effect, here you can simply click OK, and again, this is the same as it is with regular Photoshop. We're just simply modifying this text layer. Well, with this text layer, I want it to be a little bit transparent. So I'm going to decrease or diminish the fill amount. This will then remove the black from this copy so that you can kind of see through this, and you can see the video file there in the background. If you want to make this bigger, we'll press Command-T on a Mac, Control-T on Windows, and then click one of the handles there in order to free transform it. As you can start to see, I can have this show up, as I mentioned, kind of as a title slide, so that this person is introduced in this surf movie, shows his face, he looks at the camera, here comes his name, and then the clip moves on. Well, of course, I want this to fade in. So here I'll go ahead and click on this transition icon, and I'm just going to choose fade here, and then click and drag and drop that onto this area. Next, we'll scrub that to see how this looks. Again, you can see that that slowly fades in, and that looks really nice. All right, well, what about the end of this clip? If we want this to exist for more time, just simply click and drag so that it lives all the way over here. And then again, we'll find this fade icon here and drag and drop that to this area. If we want to change this, just hover over it and click and drag, or hover over the edge and click and drag if you want that to fade out before the subject does. And here you can see how that might work with his name disappearing, and then the file fades away. Okay, well now that we have all these elements together, I'm really ready to add the audio file. My audio track down here is a little bit buried. I can't quite see it. So hover over the dividing line between the media file or the video file and the timeline. When you do, your cursor will change. Click and drag that up so we can focus in on our audio track. Here, if you click on the music icon, it gives you the ability to add an audio file. The audio file that I'm adding is titled rob-music.wave. We can import WAV or MP3 files and other audio files as well. Okay, well, let's scrub back to the beginning. And what I want to do is just start to play this clip to see how it looks. Here we'll click on the play icon and watch it. All right, well, that looks good, except that the audio file, well, it goes on and on and on. 
well, how could I change that or how could I cut that? Well, if you make your way to the end here, what you can do is simply click on this clip and then go ahead and click on the scissors icon. That will create a cut. You can see that it cut this music file into two pieces. We'll click on the new piece or the piece that you don't want on the right and then press delete or backspace and now it's gone. All right, well, what about fading the audio file out? Well, in order to do that, what you can do is click on the audio file and then right click or control click. This will open up this audio dialog. Here in this dialog, I'll choose to have this fade in and also fade out. And I can determine the length of the fade there. Next, I'll go ahead and play this end part to see how this sounds. Here we'll click on the play button. All right, well that's pretty good. You could see how you could use that as a title slide, say, in a longer movie. And what this has taught us is how we can start to work with some different elements. Before we leave this movie, I'm going to go ahead and save this file and close it. So here, file, save, and then eventually we'll close it. And I just want to highlight that because when you're working with video, again, you have these really large file sizes and you're putting in all this effort. You want to make sure that you're saving your files pretty frequently. All right, well, I'll catch you in the next movie. Now that we know a little bit about working with video in Photoshop, what I want to do is dig deeper. Here we're going to take a look at how we can work with two or more clips and how we can bring those together inside of Photoshop. Because typically, that's a real world scenario, right? We very rarely have one clip. Rather, we're interested in stitching or editing together multiple clips. We'll be working with these two files here. Yet before we begin that project, I want to point something out. If we go back to our last project, You'll notice that the video file, well, it's about 70 megs. Yet if you click on the Photoshop file where we did our editing, this one's only about 10 megs. That's because this file doesn't contain the video file. Rather, it's linked to that file. Therefore, you want to save these files in the same location as the main video file. That's really important. And I neglected to point that out, so I just wanted to highlight it here. Well, here what we're going to do is select our clips. So click on one. Hold down Command on a Mac, Control on Windows, and then click on another. And this time, we're going to open these up in a little bit more of an effective way when we're working with more than one clip, and that is to go to our Tools pull-down menu. Here we'll select Photoshop, and then choose Load Files in the Photoshop Layers. This will then create a new document for us, and load these two files into our Layers panel. You can see them here, and it will also open up our timeline. Now before I do anything, I want to save this out. On a Mac, press Shift-Command-S. On Windows, press Shift-Control-S. Let's save this out as beach.psd, and then press Enter or Return. Well, now that we've saved this file, one of the things that I want to do is I want to spread out my clips. Currently, they're on top of each other. So in order to do that, click on one clip. Hold down Command on a Mac, Control on Windows, and then click on the other. Next. If you click on this video icon, it gives you the ability to create what's called a new video group. Well, we want to do that because it will then spread out our video clips in sequence. Let me show you what I mean. We'll go ahead and choose this option. And now here, if I change the view of the timeline by dragging to the left, you can see that my video clips, well, they're in a good sequence. The video clips are also inside of this group, which is really nice. And so again, it just will help me out a little bit. Let's go ahead and save this document. Press Command S or Control S to do so. All right, well, the next thing that I need to do is to start to cut some of this content out of these clips. These video files are really fun. I captured them with my iPhone, and my daughter was down at the beach, and she was riding her bodyboard there and catching waves. And so I want to have this fun little clip which showcases her riding these waves. Well, when I get to a point where I want to create a cut, say right here, one of the ways you can do that is to click on the clip. Then you can click on the cut icon, the little icon which is a pair of scissors. Next, you can go ahead and scrub down the timeline. And here I'm going to scrub down the timeline till I see another nice point of action. Now once I see that point, again, go ahead and click on the clip, and then just click on the scissors icon. Well now here I have this intermediary clip which has content which I don't need. I want to get rid of that. Well just click on it, then press delete or backspace, and it will auto-adjust the timeline for you. Let's take a look at our progress here. 
Here we can see she catches a wave, goes back out, catches another one, and then I want to create perhaps another cut right about here. Again, click in the clip, go ahead and click on the scissors icon in order to create that cut, and then scrub down to see if there's another point of action that might be interesting. And with this one, there really isn't for this file. So we click on that and then press delete or backspace. Now, if ever you want a more precise view, you can always click to expand this. So you can really get in close and get precise in regards to where you're creating these different cuts. All right, well here, she goes ahead and catches that last wave. And then I want to end this clip. Another way that we can edit or cut is by hovering over the edge of the clip and then just simply clicking and dragging. And here you can see it shows us that clip in that preview window there and then just let go in order to create that cut. If the cut that you've created in this case it doesn't look good or you don't like it, hover over the end and then just click and drag in order to change that. All right, well, great. Well, here essentially what we've done is we've taken two clips and we've turned it into three. We're starting to stitch together our little story. Well, let's continue to work with this project and see how we can work with video and Photoshop. And let's do that in the next movie. Before you get too far along in one of your video projects of bringing multiple clips together, you really want to bring in your audio track. The audio track will help you determine what type of edits or transitions you want to make. Well, we've seen that what we can do is we can go to the audio well, and here we can click on this music icon, and then choose Add Audio. The audio file that I'm going to add is this one here, beachmusic.wave. I'll simply click Open in order to add it to this project. Well, one of the things that I need to do now is I need to watch my movie and evaluate it and listen to the music. So I'll go ahead and scrub down the line here, and I'll choose a starting point perhaps right about here, and then I'll press play and kick back and watch. Let's take a look. All right, well, I encountered my first problem. While the audio track is fun and energetic and everything, this walking back out to the ocean segment just doesn't work here, so I need to get rid of it. To do that, just hover over the edge of that clip and then click and drag watching the preview window. And I want to look till I see where the action begins, right about here. So I'll go ahead and let go right at, say, this point right here. That then gives me a little bit of a tighter edit so that it's more focused on the action. It goes from one clip to the other. Again, I want to make sure that I'm really focused on that action. And here I think this all looks pretty good. The other thing that I want to do is I want to speed up these clips. To do that, I'll click on the first clip. Then you can right click or control click. And here you can see the speed. You can either slow down your clips in order to create focus or intent, or you can speed them up to build a little bit excitement. Here I'm just going to speed these up subtly. So I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of a speed there. And I'll do that to each clip. I'm going to click on these and then make sure I'm increasing that value there. And then again, go over here and add that as well. So in doing that, what that will allow me to do is to have these clips which are a little bit faster. And this will just build a little bit of drama. It also will change my timeline. Let's take a look at this transition here now. I'll click the play button. All right, well, that built a little bit of energy or excitement. The next thing I need to do is to add my transitions. So here I'll go ahead and click on this icon, which allows me to open up my transitions, and I'll use some crossfades. Here I'm just going to click and drag and drop those in between these clips. The other thing that I'm going to do is add a fade at the front and then also a fade at the end. Now with the audio file, we've seen before that what we need to do is to trim or cut that. I'll move to that location and then click on the audio clip and then click on the scissors icon. That allows me to cut off the rest of that audio file that I don't need. Next, I want to right click on the audio file because I need to have a fade out here and also a little bit of a fade in. Okay, well our story is really coming together. Let's take a look. Here we can see the clip starts, fades in, and then we have a cross dissolve, another wave that was caught, and then yet some more fun on the beach, and then one more wave that is caught by my daughter Annie here. 
Well, one of the problems, though, is that these transitions, they're just fading to nothing. I don't have a background color in this document, so this isn't really going to work for me. I could either create that background color, or what I could do is change these transitions. There are a couple of ways that we can change them. One is you can click on it and then right click. And here what I'm going to do is go ahead and choose fade with black. What that will do for this transition is it will allow it to then fade from black rather than fading to transparency. As well as with this one, I'll select fade with black. Let's go ahead and preview that. You can see how those now fade all the way to black. Going back to the beginning here, you can see how this one comes up from black and then it starts. Okay, well, let's take a look at the beginning of this. We'll go ahead and watch this one one more time. Here, I'll click on the play button. All right, well, that looks pretty good. The last thing that we want to do here is export our video file. To do that, you can navigate to the file pull down menu, then you can select export and then render video. Or, in order to access the same exact dialog, you can also click on this little arrow icon here. Again, either way will open up the same dialog. This gives us the ability to name and to determine the location for our video file. We can also use a preset in order to define how we actually want to save this. If you click on this preset pull down menu, you notice there are a ton of different options. Well, in my case, what I want to do is save this to my iPhone so I can show it on my iPhone and also my iPad. So I'm going to use this preset. By choosing that, it then predefines a few settings here, which will help me so that I can create a file which will fit for that particular format. The next thing that I want to do is give this an appropriate name. I'll go ahead and call this Annika-Beach. And then finally, we simply need to click Render, and then Photoshop will go through the rendering or the exporting process so that we can then take this video file and transfer it to a different device or post it online. All right, well, now that that rendering or exporting is complete, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the Adobe Bridge. In the Adobe Bridge, I'm going to select this file. You can see this is my video file here. I can play that back right inside a bridge. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm also going to turn off the audio, though, so we don't have to listen to that there. You can see how this file has been compressed and how we can play this back and view our project. And of course, this document is now ready to be transferred to another device. And as you can see from these demo movies, working with video in Photoshop is incredibly powerful because you can take advantage of all that you already know. And then by learning a few of these simple steps, well, you can put all of that together in order to create some really compelling and interesting projects. In this last movie on video, I want to highlight how you can get really creative with your video clips in some non-traditional ways. In other words, I want to focus in on how we can take advantage of Photoshop's creative strength and how we can modify our video clips in some pretty interesting ways. Well, here in this file, you can see that I have this video clip and also an audio track. What I want to do is just play a couple seconds of this so that you can get a feel for the video file and also for the mood or the tone of the audio track. In order to do that, I'll click on the play button. Let's go ahead and watch and listen. This particular clip I captured by leaning my camera up against a pole that was pointed up towards this moving sculpture down at the beach. And I kind of like the mood and the feel here. Well, we've seen before that one of the things that we can do is we can use adjustment layers. For example, we could create a hue saturation adjustment layer. We could go into our blue channel and desaturate those blues. We can also do other things as well. For example, let's click on this icon for black and white. Well, black and white is fascinating because it allows us to control the image in a really powerful way. Yet, let's say that we apply a blending mode to this layer. Well, we can do that. You can click on your blending mode option and then choose soft light. In this way, we can come up with this really interesting kind of muted high contrast type of a look. Take a look at this. Here's before and now here's after. The whole point of this is that the things that we can do in Photoshop to our images, we can now do our video clips. Well, what about taking this even further? Well, one of the things that you can do is you can click on your video clip right here. You can go to the filter pull down menu and select convert for smart filters. 
This will convert this to a smart object. Once you've done that, you can apply different filters to your video file. Let me show you what I mean. If we go to the filter pull down menu and then go to blur, let's choose a blur, say like radio blur. By choosing a radio blur in a center in a certain amount, we can click OK and then apply that blur to this clip. As we scrub the clip, we're going to see that blur take place or affect the clip. If ever we don't like it, well, just click into the smart object later and you can then turn that off. And this is really the power of working with smart objects, is that you can apply all of these different filters and it's editable. Another thing that you can do, which is fascinating, is you can duplicate this entire video group and then you can resize your video clips. Let me show you what I mean. Well here, I'm going to minimize this video group just so we can focus in on this and then click and drag it to the new layer icon. Notice I now have a new video group. That also shows up in my timeline below. The next step for me is going to be to free transform this. To free transform a video or an image layer or a text layer for that matter, you navigate to the edit pull down menu and then choose free transform. Well here, I'll hold down the shift key and simply click and drag in order to free transform this and then press enter or return. All right, well let's do that one more time. Here, click and drag to the new layer icon so I have another video group and then I'll move this one off to the right. Well now that I have these two versions of these video files, I'm gonna go ahead and reposition them a little bit. So here you can hold down command on a Mac or control on Windows and click and drag these around so that you can reposition where they're displayed. Well, what's interesting about all of this is that because we have this, what we can then do is play this back and all of these will move at once. Let's play a short clip of this new layout here. I'll click on the play icon so we can watch a few seconds of this now. Here you can see that these files have the same color and tone and they're moving in some pretty interesting ways. And really what we're doing here is just scratching the surface. And what I'm trying to get you excited about is how you can take advantage of Photoshop's strength. You can work with masking and blending and filters and multiple layers and even more. There's so much that you can do. You can even blend an entire video group layer onto another group. For example, if we click on this group, rather than pass through, you can use a blending mode, say like soft light. And here you can see how all of these different video files are really sitting on top of each other and how you can start to have them play on top of each other. Again, let me click on the play button one more time. The point of this isn't that you're going to create clips like this. Rather, the point is to get you excited about how you can use your imagination with your video files. The sky's the limit when it comes to working with Photoshop and video. And what I hope you do is start to play with this and experiment with how you can create traditional video stories and also how you can get really creative and use all those creative skills that you already have with Photoshop in order to edit together video files which are distinct and compelling.